Hi, and welcome to thethings.io. Today, we will be showing you how to connect ThingStream with thethings.io. We will set up a ThingStream button with the things.io IoT platform, so that when you click the button, its GPS location will be sent to the things.io and can easily be seen on a map in your Insight dashboard. In your ThingStream account, make sure your button says active next to it. If it doesn't say active, you can find a helpful link in the blog post about how to activate it. Now click the button and look at the IMSI number and the identity number. These are what we will use in the future to send the button's specific ID with it to the things.io. Now let's create a thing in the things.io website. On the sidebar, click things, then create new IoT product. Here you can enter your name and make sure you put JSON as your format. Then click create. Now you should see the new product you just created. Click details and look at the product ID as well as the hash. We will use these later when making the HTTP request. Now let's create a flow on ThingStream. For this project, it will be best to begin with a template. So click on flows, create flow from flow library, ThingStream button, then email tracker. This flow will give us a starting point. You can change the name of the flow if you want and then we'll click edit to personalize it. Once in the flow, you can move things around a little bit to make it easier to read. If you wanna delete a connection, just click on it and then press delete on your keyboard. Where location mail is, we're gonna replace that with HTTP request and then add msg.payload onto the end of it to help with troubleshooting later. Now let's take a closer look at the flow. Whatever kind of data, either GPS or GSM cell data, will affect the path that the flow takes. In each path, we're going to organize our data using an msg.payload that we can send with our HTTP request to the things.io. Next, let's make some changes to the prepare GPS node. First, we will add an external ID and identity. These will identify what button was pushed and they are the numbers that we saw under the button details on the first part of this video. Then we will add the time pushed value, which will tell when the button was pushed. You can also delete the addition of the URL if you choose. We will make similar changes to the prepare GSM node, making sure the source says GSM and that the longitude and latitude values come from the payload. Finally, that leaves the HTTP request node. For this one, make sure the method is set to post and the return is a parsed JSON object. For the URL, we will follow the pattern you see here. Remember, your product ID and hash will come from your thing on the things.io site. The ID name will be set to external ID. And the function will be the name of our function, which we will write next. Let's call it thingstring parser. Now we've finished with the flow. Don't forget to save. To create a function, click on cloud code in the sidebar then click Add Function. Once here, give the function a name. 
It must be the same one as you use in your HTTP request. So in our case, that's thingstream-parser. Then assign your function to a thing. This should be whatever thing you've been using to represent your button on the things.io site. Now change the code to look like this. For more information on $geo and GeoKeys, there's a link included in this blog post. To test your button, you must deploy the flow. Click deploy, deploy test, a thing, then your button, and deploy. Now we're ready to click the button. When the button is successful, it will send a message in your debug window that says status success. To get your data, find your thing and click details. Towards the bottom of the page, you should see your IMSI number from the button there under names. Click details. Now you should see a screen like this. Under CTM Payload, you can see all the payload messages you sent with your button. Under Geolocation, you can view the map or the list view. First, let's create a map of all of our buttons under our button thing. Click product, then your button, then select map as the widget type, and finally real time. Now let's create a table that shows when each button was last pressed. Finally, we can create a widget for a specific button that shows payloads. Here's what we have so far. These are just a few examples of all the cool things you can do with the Insight Dashboard. That's all for today. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions on the things.iot platform.